Today I am going to talk about overview of office-based laryngology. I am Rakesh Shrivasa, consultant laryngologist at Shushut Institute of Plastic Surgery and Super Speciality Hospital, Lucknow, India. The history of laryngology started from the well-known discovery by a voice teacher and a scientist, Manuel Garcia, in 1854. Living in London, he succeeded in performing otolaryngoscopy and he was first one to, to visualize the larynx. But it was in 1804 that Philip Bosony invented himself virtually completely to develop a light conductor instrument and he has used this instrument to allow inspecting the ear, urethra, rectum, cervix and other cavities of the human body. But it was a professor of physiology, Zoran Zamak from the University of Hungary. He uh, assumed a Turk mirror and used a concave head mirror to visualize the larynx. And he is a person who is a very keen interest in phonetics and uh, performing extensive study on the role of voice, acoustic condition of the throat, mouth, nasal cavity in the production of consonants. First office-based laryngology to directly visualize the larynx using a tongue depressor and a mirror was done in Germany by Albert von Tobold in 1864. And he removed with this method the laryngeal papilloma. So that was the first, uh, the beginning of a office-based laryngology in 1864 by Albert von Tobold. In 1895, the laryngologist Alfred Kistin first described the direct inspection of vocal cord and he has modified the esophagoscope for this purpose. While in 1897, it was Gustav Klein, a laryngologist from Germany, he removed the first foreign body from the bronchus. It was a piece of bone in the right main bronchus. So the first foreign body was removed in 1897 by a German scientist, that is Gustav Killian. There are a few other to remember it. It was Brunings in 1911, first unsolicited transoral vocal cord injection that was in 1911. And it was Arnold in 1962. It was a transoral approach using direct laryngoscopy. The first Teflon was used. Coming to the concept of why the need for office-based procedures. Office-based laryngology is indicated when the patient is medically unfit, morbid obese patient, patient with a cervical spine problem, maxillofacial deformities or trauma, when there is a severe trismus is there, when patient requires a repeated surgery like papilloma, and in Indian context, the cost is an important uh, hurdle in management of benign laryngeal disease. So, it's a cost-effective procedure. The setup and the equipment. The equipment normally we require a flexible bronchoscope with a working channel. Preferred is 4.9 mm. Preferred chip on tip with high definition quality surgical monitor. Patient in a sitting posture in a surgical chair with head stable in neutral position. Surgical monitor on the left side and behind the patient. Other equipment related to bronchoscopy like uh, the accessories like biopsy forcep, injection, aspiration needle, rigid scopes like 70 to 90 degree, 45 degree sinus endoscope, giraffe forcep. The instrumentation we require is transoral curve forceps, flexible forceps for the flexible scopes, cannula with syringe, eustachian catheter for laryngeal gargle, endoscopic sclerotherapy injection needle, and if we are doing a laser procedure, then office-based laser procedure like CO2, the pulse dye laser, KTP laser, and YAG laser. The other medical uh, supplements we require is a 4% xylocaine, xylocaine jelly, oxymetazolane, and nebulization in airway procedures, 
and two percent saloping can be spread. So this is uh, Nakajima forcep, also known as MAC laryngeal forcep, and it is a curved forcep for doing biopsies, removing small papillomas uh, as an office. Preparation, patient should be three to four hour nail orally, 1% xylocaine jelly used in the nose. In case of deviation, deviation nasal septum, you can do a 4% xylocaine packing with oxymetazoline for 20 to 20 minutes. With a 4% xylocaine can be used through the eustachian catheter or it can be used through the working channel. Patient was asked to say E while 4% was straight and maximum dose of four to four 5 ml of 4% can be used. 1.8 ml biopsy forces or biopsy in office can be done using a white light or a narrowband imaging that is for a target biopsy in a very small region. It's for office based procedure, it may be transoral, transnasal route that is through the nose, it may be combined with percutaneous approach thyroid muscle, it may be EMG guided, non-EMG guided. There is a variation on the percutaneous approach under direct vision laryngoscope. So one can use a flexible laryngoscope through the nose and can use uh, thyroid night approach that is through the thyroid membrane between the thyroid space through the thyroid cartilage that is tan-thyroid and cricothyroid membrane that is between the cricoid and the thyroid cartilage. So looking at the using the flexible or rigid scope through the transoral approach or through the transnasal approach one can use a do a procedure using either injection needle for uh, Botox injection or for augmentation can use various materials. So flexible endoscopic for biopsy forceps, transoral route, or both visualization. So tips for office-based procedure. For looking at the base of tongue, if you are using a flexible scope, ask the patient to say ah. So once the patient say ah, the base of tongue lifted, and then you can see clearly the base of tongue. Otherwise, with the flexible scope, it is sometimes very difficult to see the part of the base of tongue. If you want to see a pariform fossa, then you have to ask the patient to say E. For any office-based procedure, if you are going it, doing it over the vocal folds, then ask the patient to take a slow breath, stop or reduce swallowing at the time of the procedure. So while doing a biopsy or while doing a, a procedure removing a benign laryngeal disease from the vocal folds and ask the patient to breathe slowly and reduce the swallowing effort. Taking biopsy from periform sinus, ask the patient to say E. This will open up the periform sinus. Do not try to use excess of local anesthetic in case of biopsy post-radiated neck. Because post-radiated neck, the saliva is already very thin, thick and viscid and the sensation of the supraglottis or the glottis is already reduced because of the radiation. So we don't require that much of local anesthetic in those cases. Anterior part of the larynx, if you want to see the anterior part of the larynx, then extend the neck. It will bit extend the neck and you can see the anterior part of the uh, anterior commissure or near the petiole area. For right pariform sinus examination, then turn the patient head to the left for the left pariform sinus, turn the patient head to the right. So this will open the pariform sinus of the opposite side. Right side and nasal passage insertion with the head turns to the right side will give a better visualization of right cord and ventricle. Reverse with the left side nasal insertion. The indications are of a office-based procedure are right, like benign and malignant laryngeal pathology, local cord palsy, paralysis or paralysis, Recurrent laryngeal papillomatosis, laryngeal granulomas, antiglottic web, laryngeal cyst, benign and malignant tumors. Or you can do these procedures in OR.
that is operating room, like tracheal stenosis, foreign body removal in adult, high risk patients like cardiac or bronchial asthma patients, and better to take these patients in OR and do it as an office based procedure with the uh, monitor assisted uh, monitor assisted uh, anesthesia. Augmentation for the vocal fold, it is done either in subepithelial plane or it may be done in a deeper plane. The superficial injection is usually due for the vocal cord scarring or lamina propria deficits. Deep injections like craven for a dysphonia or patient have got a vocal cord palsy when the gap is less than uh, 2.5 mm. Deep injections like I use the substance use the hyaluronic acid, collagen or carboxymethyl cellulose and long lasting deeper injection is given for a use the material uses the calcium hydroxyl appetite which has a longer duration it is it stays there for a longer period of time that is calcium hydroxyl appetite. These are the chart which typically indicates the duration of, of each substance hyaluronic acid minimal for three months. It is good by biocompatibility and most of us use hyaluronic acid. The other Teflon is now not being used because of the granuloma formation. The other material what we use is a calcium hydroxyl appetite and which has a longer duration and it remains there for a long lasting and it has got minimal inflammatory reaction. So injection procedures Relative contraindication, posterior laryngeal gap or large interretinoid deficits, poor pulmonary status. So for those patients, the injection procedure is relatively contraindication. The various approaches, everyone has got its own uh, feel, own comfortability. Zytos and Ami reported advantage of thyroid approach compared with other percutaneous approach. But uh, many surgeons even I also prefer to use a cricothyroid approach, which is, I found it easier to do. Advantage of trans cricothyroid approach is injection material can be placed in a muscle space without violating the ligament part of it. So for a small gap of less than 2 mm, it has a greater chances for a, for a larger glottic gap better to do a thyroplasty procedure or a permanent. So this is a chart which is indicated, this is showing the office based procedure for benign and malignant laryngeal pathology, vocal cord paralysis, injection procedures and laser surgery for papillomatosis, for small VAPs, for a small cyst. So this laser can be used. Complication of office-based procedure, there may be post-procedure aspiration, vasovagal reaction, epistaxis, bleeding from biopsy site, edema, respiratory obstruction. There may be aspiration pneumonia, hematoma, Teflon migration, not now be not being used. CO2 laser, if there is a movement of the vocal fold, that may damage the uh, superficial lamina propria and there may be fibrosis, there may be scar formation. The contraindication of office base is severe gag reflex. Non cooperative patient, if the potency is very poor and the compromised airway is there, then better not to do office base. Uncorrected coagulopathy, when the you think that the uh, prothrombin time. Uh, is high and INR is on the higher side, better not to do it. Allergy with local anesthesia is a relative contraindication for it. So relative contraindications are bronchial asthma can be done in OR or with a murder assisted procedure and history of vasovagal or angina medical illness, better to do in OR with pre -anesthetic consultation and use of anticoagulants. Various injection procedures like spasm for a spasmodic dysphonia, Botox, 
contact galoba you literally it is given steroids vocal fold nodule and for recurrent galoba vocal folds you can use a steroid for uh, to reduce the size of the so to conclude this uh, office based learning algae it's a need of the hour indian context is the cost it's uh, cost is very important and risk of anesthesia is there the office base is preferred and 80% angel procedure can be done in office